Welcome back to the vlog. My name's Matt. Don't get in an uproar about it. Today, we're playing the same event as yesterday, the 1100, 400k guarantee over at Venetian. Gonna try to crush it this time. Gonna try to get there almost on time. There's not much more to say. Let's just get right into it. So at 100, 100, 100 now, we are at the new start of a day with 40K starting stack. Uh, it always feels good to come in fresh, new day. I don't really love firing the second bullet on the same day because the next day freshness is just, it's unbeatable. 40K in the stack, I open ace queen of diamonds in the low jack to 400. The hijack and the big blind both call and we go three way to a flop of 10, seven, four with two diamonds. So obviously a very clean flop right away for us. Uh, very easy C bet for 700. The hijack calls, so we go heads up to a turn, which is the six of spades. I decided to check and probably just call, given that I don't have info on this player, and I've sort of been barreling into players and never getting folds. Uh, I just decided to go the passive route for now. He bets 1.4K, and I think we can probably just check raise here. Uh, given that he's usually only gonna have one pair, we can even have some of the very strongest holdings as well as sets that we sometimes play this way. I kind of like a check raise to pressure those hands. However, I just call and the river is a jack of clubs. So we totally brick and I think we have some small, tiny piece of showdown value. So not much I'm gonna do here, just gonna check and probably fold. I check and he checks it back and wins with five four spades. So not the way I really envisioned that hand going, uh, but we didn't lose too much. Thank goodness she's finally sleeping over there. 100, 200, 200 now, 40K in the stack once again, and I'm on the button with King-8 offsuit. Decided to open this one up to 800 as I feel like the blinds are a little bit on the weaker side. They both call, and we go through to a flop of Ace-8-8. Eight, eight. Absolutely beautiful, just straight up flopping trips. Checks to me, I see bet 1.1K, and only the small blind calls. So we heads up to a turn, which is the Queen of Spades. Two flush draws on board now, and he finds the lead for 1.6K. Now, Going back to my previous theory that people just have it, uh, I decided that he probably has something pretty good here. He might even have an eight at some frequency. He often has an ace. And at this size, he may also have some hands where he's trying to set his price or at least not have to face a much bigger bet than this. So it could be a draw, could be some kind of hand like a pair. I make it 4.2K, trying to keep it relatively affordable. However, he says, screw your affordability. I'm gonna rip for 25K. I'm bewildered, but obviously snap, because there's just so many hands in his range that we destroy. Uh, he can feel on top of the world with an eight. He can feel on top of the world with certain ASEX hands here. Instead, he has king, queen of hearts. Uh, he's drawing unbelievably thin. I believe he only has the two outs, which uh, he shouldn't even have had, because to be honest with you, uh, you know, getting to, the getting to the turn in the first place is super ambitious with king high with a player behind, yet he does it. The river's seven of spades for the hold, and I rake in a pretty big pot. 66k in the stack now, 100, 300, 300 blinds. I have seven five of spades in the hijack, and I open it up to 800. The cutoff and the big blind both call, and the flop comes 10, 5, 3. So we've got middle pair, some backdoor stuff going on. I decided to choose this hand to C bet 1.1k and potentially set up future barrels. The cutoff calls. Turns to eight of spades, and rather than barreling, I decide to check because it's not an over card, and it's not a card I will often improve on. So I decide that a check raise might be a little more in order, let him bet some of his one pair hands and apply a lot of pressure to them. I check, and he obliges me with a 2.7K bet. I make it 8.7K, and he calls. I'm planning to jam brick rivers or when I get there, but the river seven of diamonds gets me there the weirdest way. I stick with the plan and just end up jamming, which is about 20k effective. However, he folds, and I kind of wonder if this is one of those spots where I got a little overambitious when I improve. It does kind of prove that my jamming spot with a bluff probably would have been pretty effective, but I maybe could have exploited if we sized down here to get a little bit more action. But it's not too bad to take down the pot, and I've got 92k going into 200, 300, 300. Kind of weird blind jump to not have the big blind go up and have the small blind go up only 100, but hey. I don't make the structures, I just play the tournaments. The hijack opens to 800, and I'm in the cutoff with king nine of spades. I bump it up to 2.5k. He makes the call, so we go heads up to a flop of 7-3 deuce with two spades. He checks and calls 2.1k. 
The turn is a six of diamonds. And again, trying to learn my lesson that these high value, sort of high equity hands are better barreled, I go for another bet of 7.5K. However, he calls. The river's the six of hearts, and the way he called the flop in turn, I just really didn't think he'd be folding anything, especially on this card, except for maybe some hands that I'm like beating, like worse flush draws, but there's not very many of those anyway, so it's not that relevant. There are a few flush draws that are ahead of me, uh, but would fold, but that's not that many combos either. Because of all this, I decided to just give up and check back, and indeed, he has pocket tens, a hand he is almost definitely not folding based on uh, just his body language and sort of his overall play in the tournament thus far. So bump down a little bit here, sitting on 80k, blinds are now 200, 400, 400. I have queen jack offsuit in middle position and I bump it up to 1k. The button calls and we go heads it to a flop of king 8, 5 rainbow. He calls 1.8k. Turns to eight of clubs, and I decide to check because it's not really a good card to barrel on. It will connect with a lot of his flop calling range, doesn't connect with much of my flop C betting range, and overall, I just don't have a lot of equity here. If he has a king, he's almost never folding, and I can't even improve to beat that hand. So I check, and he checks it back. The river's a six of hearts, and now I kind of feel like he has a lot of pocket sixes, pocket threes and deuces, maybe some ace high floats that didn't make a backdoor hand. So I decide to represent something like a weaker king, something like, you know, nines through nines through queens, nines through, yeah, nines through queens. Uh, so I bet 3.6k, thinking I don't need to make it all that big, but he makes it 9.5k. And this is a spot where people just have it. Again, it's like I could try to do some weird hero thing, but what's he even, what's he even going to fold? If he has pure air, he'll fold, obviously, but it's hard to put people on pure air when they take the line where they check back turn. When they specifically check back the turn and don't stab, I really feel like they got it. So I fold, go on to the next hand. A little sheepish. A little bit like getting caught with my hand in the cookie jar a lot these past two days. 70k in the stack now. Same blind level. The button opens to 1k. I'm in the small blind with jack 9 of spades, and I decide to just call. Big blind calls as well, so three-way flop of ace 5-3. All spades. Uh, I believe I flopped an all spade flush quite recently as well, so kind of funny to have it happen here again. The button C bets 2k. I decided to make it 5.5k. I want it to be pretty affordable. I want him to call with just a spade, which is in pretty bad shape, as well as some ace x hands that maybe don't even have a spade. The turn, however, is the deuce of spades. So one of the worst cards in the deck. Obviously, he just has so many single spade holdings. Many of them beat me. I check. But when he checks it back and the river is now the five of hearts, I'm starting to feel I'm starting to feel like maybe our hand's good here. Uh, I think that he has a lot of ace hands. He has a few ace hands that have a small spade in them as well. And there are only a couple ace hands that have a better spade in them. So unless he's peeling with just like queen of spades and checking back, king of spades and checking back, I have the best hand here quite a bit. I decide to bet 6.5k. However, he makes it 20k. And just again, like I hate to keep doing the, the like the live read thing, but he just he just has it. Like he definitely has it. Forget any of the theory. Just look at the guy. He's got it. Uh, I eventually fold and he shows me the ace king with the king of spades. So he did find the sneaky, sneaky check back. He felt like his hand was so invulnerable. And then even when the board paired, uh, he decided to go for the big raise. And he was correct, but we got away from it. So hard to know. If I have any calls there or not, I think something like queen 10 of spades would be a lot harder for me to get away from. But this time, this time I got away. We win a few more hands, uh, nothing really big, just taking down small ones here and there. And we're back up to 90k in the stack. Blinds are now 300, 500, 500 though, and the hijack makes it 1.2k. I'm in the cutoff with ace king off and have a very easy three bet to 3.8k. The button now cold four bet jams for 13.5k. Uh, not really what you love to see at these steps, but when it folds around to me, it's just going to be a very easy call down. Uh, there's just too many hands we're flipping with, and people sometimes go crazy when you don't expect it. He's got a pretty reasonable ace-queen of diamonds here, but we're in really amazing shape, of course. Flop comes out 9-8 deuce with a little bit of backdoor potential. Turns an 8, though, and kills a lot of the backdoor potential, but allows the door to open for some chop outs. However, the river's to seven of spades, and we just uh, we win it the clean way. 100k now in the stack, and we're playing this hand seven-handed, same blind level. Middle position makes it 1.2k, and it's the very next hand, actually. I'm in the hijack with ace-king again, and I make it 3.8k. Again. 
Folds to middle position who makes it 9.5k. Now, he's pretty competent, so his range isn't just aces here. It's a lot of really strong hands, uh, but it's also a couple hands like ace-queen that we're beating, maybe even some ace-jack suited occasionally, ace-five suited occasionally. And with the stacks as they are, uh, I believe he has somewhere around, you know, 40, 45k. Uh, it's just going to be really hard to find a fold here, and a call doesn't seem ideal. I kind of want to realize all my equity, especially against this stronger player who might have it in them to barrel me off on later streets. So I rip it, and surprise, he has aces. <laughs> The board rolls out, 874, all hearts, so massive sweat right off the bat. Deuce of diamonds on the turn, doesn't make it any sweatier. Queen of clubs on the river, couldn't get it done. So upsetting, so upsetting to just like be, be largely steamrolling and playing pretty well. And then I think not even honestly make a misstep here, but to get it into a high variance spot against a better player and, and just be, just be kind of screwed here. It'd be really badly cooler. Meanwhile, we still have 55k, so a very good stack at 300, 600, 600, still almost 100 blinds, but back close to starting. Middle position makes it 1.2k, and I'm on the button with King Jack of Spades. I flat call, and the big blind also calls, so we go 3 was to a flop of 773, 1 spade, 2 hearts. Checks to me, and I think it's a little bit close. Uh, I don't think we really need to stab. We have a little tiny, tiny bit of showdown value. We have some backdoor equity, and we could start stabbing now. But I just felt like multi-way, we didn't really have to. The big blind also has the largest share of 7x in his range, so I just decided to check back this time. The turn comes as king of diamonds, however, and middle position bets 1.5k. Uh, it really feels like he's going to have it here quite a bit, a king-queen hand, an ace-king hand. But, uh, you know, we just have a hand that's too good, so we make the call. The big blind also calls, though, and it's now starting to feel really confusing. Like, what can I really beat here? The river comes the eight of diamonds, and it checks to me. So now I go from feeling not that confident about my hand to like, well, if everybody checks me, I almost always have to have the best hand, right? So I go for a medium sized bet of 6.5K, mostly targeting the big blinds range who will often have a pocket pair. Maybe he backs into, you know, an 8X of hearts kind of thing. Something with a weak king, maybe even. However, he folds, middle position calls. Total backfire because he's got the king queen off. So I almost snuck away there with only one bet lost, but I try to go thin and it backfires on me. Not the day where my bets are really working out exactly how I expect. 50k in the stack now, 400, 800, 800 blinds. The cutoff, who's the player from the ace king versus aces hand, makes it 2k. The small blind, who's a bit of a weaker player, calls with something like a 45k stack. The cutoff covers me, he's the opener, and I look down at aces. <laughs> I make a 7.5k in the big blind, and both players call. So we're already looking at a pretty bloated pot uh, with a very strong hand. And of course, we're really excited to maybe, maybe stack our nemesis over here. Okay, not stack him, but put a dent. Put a big dent in it, at least. The board rolls out queen nine three, and I decide to see bet 7k, and the small blind calls the turn is a six of diamonds. So uh, I go for another C bet, but I want to keep it small because uh, he doesn't have a ton left, and I don't really want to threaten his stack per se. I see bet 13.5k and he just folds. So we take down a nice one, but it would have been nicer to stack him. 70k in the stack now. Middle position opens to 1.8k. A hijack calls and I'm in the cutoff with King Jack of Hearts. I decided to also call and the button, small blind, and big blind all call. Flop comes out, 876 all hearts. So again, this is like the third flopped flush in, in two tournament bullets, like probably sub 10 hours of play. Checks to me, and I don't think we want to check this through. There are so many hands uh, that could really, you know, put in some action. I decided to bet 4.5k. The small blind calls, and the turns to nine of hearts. This is pretty bad, not so much because we won't have the best hand anymore, although that's also sometimes true, but because it kills action. If he has something like 8-7, it seems like he has a pretty easy fold to an additional bet. The single 10 of hearts, or 5 of hearts now beat me. The single ace of hearts now beats me, so it's really a bad card. <laughs> However, I check it back and I'm calling for one card in my head. One card. Can you guess what that card is? It's the Ten of Hearts, and it comes. The small boy now uh, changes the game. He leads for 5k with about 10k behind, and obviously there is a straight flush on the board that I beat. I jam, he snaps with 9-4 offsuit with the Four of Hearts, and I count myself incredibly fortunate to find this action, as well as this run out. Thank you, Poker Gods. 
110k in the stack now. Blinds are 501k, 1k. The button jams, 15k. I'm on the big blind with Ace-4 of Diamonds, and I think this is actually pretty close. Uh, seems like a pretty standard call-off in sort of like online land, but live, a lot of people are tighter. However, I do make the call, and he does have Jack-8 of Clubs. Board rolls out, 10-6-4 with two clubs, nine of hearts, six of clubs. And, you know, I, I hear so many times, like, oh, he had too many outs. Like, he... he he couldn't hit because he had too many outs. Well, I mean, like, where's the too many outs to hit now? You know, where is that? Where's that for, for me when they have the too many outs? <laughs> anyway, we do find a couple chip-ups in some other spots and find ourselves with 120k at 600, 1200, 1200, basically 100 big blinds. The button makes it 3k, and I'm in the big blind with ace-deuce off. I make the call. Flop comes, ace-king-deuce. I check, and he bets 5.5k with 25k behind. Again, just like getting a bit of a feeling here, a bit of a spider sense. I think he has an ace, and I think he's going to call if I rip it off. I decide to just jam. I don't wait around. He tanks, but he does eventually call with ace five of hearts. So we really got him right where we want him. Obviously, we can still lose this hand on a couple of different runouts, a couple of different ways, but we're in really, really good shape here. The turn is the three of spades. Gives him a couple more outs, but, you know, last time they had so many outs, they... they you would think they couldn't hit, but they did. This time, he doesn't have as many. So on the river four of diamonds, we lose. Sheesh. So again, I keep listing hands where, where we lose, and then I somehow have more chips the next time. I'm really winning a lot of small pots because like I take note of the really big ones. Yet I'm chipping up here. 140k in the stack, 1k, 2k, 2k blinds. Middle position who has the guy we've been tangling with a lot opens to 4.5k. I'm on the button with ace queen off, and I bump it to 13k. He makes the call, so we go heads up to the flop of king five deuce rainbow. I see bet 8.5k, and he makes the call. Turns to six of spades, and I decide that given that I'm blocking ace king and king queen, this is a pretty good candidate to just plan to go for three with. Uh, the runout's not going to be able to get a lot scarier per se, other than maybe a spade coming. I could maybe slow down on that, but given that the king is a spade, he shouldn't have as many sort of like good spade combos in range. So on the turn six, he checks, I bet 18k, and he calls. The river's now the jack of clubs, and he checks. I decide to stick with the plan. I really want to apply pressure and potentially assert dominance as kind of like the big, the big player at this table. I put in 48k, however, he snap calls with pocket tens. <laughs> and so there's just like really reiterates over and over again like i just should not be bluffing as much i just should not be bluffing in these big spots where people are seeming to feel like they have a good enough hand to call multiple streets with it's not to say to never barrel but the like the blocker stuff is just it's just not working out it's just not working out note he says very confidently to me that he put me on his queen on the flop and i'm like great good for you i could have a billion other hands but you nailed it and he did so 70k in the stack now, 1.5k, 2.5k, 2.5k blinds at a new table. Unfortunately, I hate losing hands like that and then getting moved, but that's how it goes sometimes. I have pocket tens in the small blind and it folds all the way around to me. I open to 7.5k and the big blind rips for 56k. So just about 22 and a half bigs, but it's going to be standard blind on blind. I snap call. He has ace queen of diamonds and the board rolls out a six, four, seven, eight. I'm left with 13.5k. It hurts. I fold a few hands and then under the gun opens to 5.5k. I'm in the hijack with king eight of diamonds and again, just 13.5k. I rip it in there. Folds around him and he asks how much more, which is like outrageous to me because you should be able to visually verify I have like five big blinds. I tell him it's 8k more. And he calls with a seven of hearts, which of course is just a super snap. Even if it's like 10, 15 blinds, he's probably supposed to call. But uh, I tell him I'm going to win this one easy. No problem. I think one player at the table chuckled, but this was a serious, boring table. So uh, I, I take my chuckle in stride and the board runs out with no diamonds, no straight draws, something like six, four, deuce, 10, three. I don't know. It doesn't matter. We don't win. And we're out of the tournament once again. So a very unfortunate sort of 
to have the day go so long. That's, that's always the worst, right? The day goes so long and you get nothing. And this is tournament poker, guys. This is like, I show some of the losses. It's kind of hard because they don't do as well. They don't perform as well because you can't be like, oh my God, like final table, blah, blah, blah. And you do a thumbnail like, you just can't do that and you know nobody cares or you post the chip snack from your peak and like people realize that it's not like a final table or like final few tables sort of stack so uh, a little bit rough to 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 put to put these out there but i like to put the losses out there because it puts it all in perspective now i don't publish every tournament because when i bust in the first hour and a half there's usually like two or three interesting hands at most at most so getting through all these crazy hands, uh, so many of them were so interesting. I just wanted to get it out there. Even though I was in for two bullets, 2.2K, out for zero. And uh, yeah, the tournament streak is is not is not so hot yet. We had that one cash and then another smaller cash. And now we're just now we're just like waiting for the next one to happen. But some awesome vlogs upcoming for you guys. Uh, really excited to start sharing some of that with you. I hope to see you all in the next video. And always remember, just triple.